Good evening and welcome to Live 605. I'm your host, Con Kazanzitis, a.k.a. Shave the Man. Thank you for joining us once again, either through Facebook, the Stray Whisker page, my own personal page, I'm a glutton for punishment, I've said this on numerous occasions, and of course on YouTube. We're on YouTube on Shave the Man, as well as Stray Whisker TV. If you haven't checked that out, you can at any time. Don't do it. Well, do it. You can do it whenever you like. Okay, do it whenever you like. Um, that's what it's about here. If you can, if you want to check out these videos, any of these videos, the easiest way to do so is through YouTube because what happens is that Facebook tends to bury things. They're very good at burying and changing things up. In fact, they've been a great source of annoyance for me. I don't know what Facebook is playing at the moment, but they're changing things all the time. And I know that uh, change is as good as a holiday, but in this instance, I need to find things and I can't, and they've moved the buttons or they've changed things and how things present themselves and so on and so forth, but that's all boring. Let's make things exciting here. If you are new here, please type in new, and there have been quite a few new people that have joined the madness that is live 605. It's 605 uh, Australian Eastern Standard Time, in case you're wondering. I've had a number of people from the United States say, wow, that's really great. It's 3.05 a.m. here. And we'd love to join you live, but we're asleep. Although some of them aren't asleep. And that's an interesting thing in and of itself. You stay up later. Get your sleep. Right? Get your beauty sleep. It's very, very important. Uh, Brent Conrad, good morning, kind sir. Um, yes, well, it's, uh, it's certainly not evening there. <laughs> obviously. Nice of you to join the live. Uh, Leon, hello. How are you? Good day. Um, nice to see Leon on the live. And who else we've got on the live here? We've got uh, David James. Hello and howdy to you. I'm new. Are you, Dave? Right. Yes. Well, I'm having tea. There's something new for you. I'm not drinking coffee today. I'm going to drink tea. Uh, welcome, Dave, by the way. It's nice to see you here. Seeing so new. Boy, did we have a cracker of a live uh, last week when Stephen Carter wasn't in the... Oh, he's in the house now. Oh, okay. Good day, Con. Stephen and Sarah watching you live again tonight. Hello, Mr. and Mrs. Carter. It's lovely uh, for you to join us. I'm, I'm sort of sorry you couldn't catch us uh, live last week, Stephen, but of course you had more pressing things to do, and I understand that. That's perfectly Okay. Uh, top of the morning to you, Mark. Uh, good morning from Scotland. There you go, Scotland. Scotland the brave. I love the Scots. I really do. There's something, I hold them near and dear to my heart. John Boyd from Texas. I wonder what time it is. In, can you tell us what time it is in Texas, John? Uh, let us know. Um, what time would it be in Texas? Anyway, it's 6.07 or no, 6.09 p.m. here in uh, Sydney, Australia, Sydney time, Australia. I'm not in Sydney, actually. I'm a little bit out uh, out of out of town um so let us know um if you're in texas and you're watching this you're either an insomniac or you're an early riser or you're a shift worker or whatever it is maybe doesn't matter what you are as long as you join the conversation it's 3 <laughs> i knew it okay it's 309 a.m well uh welcome sir that's very kind of you to join us um hopefully it's not a case of insomnia, but more a case of you're out and about doing things, working or whatever. But if you are working, what are you doing watching this live? Far be it from me to question you and ask you about that. What I will be asking you, though, this evening or this morning or this afternoon, wherever you may be, is what are some of the things that you have to juggle and troubleshoot when you wet shave? We seem to be troubleshooting and juggling a lot of things these days. Um, uh, <laughs> yes, that's right. We're not obsessed. We're dedicated. Uh, top of the class, Brent. Absolutely. I agree with you entirely. We're all dedicated. We're not obsessed. Um, so today I want to cover some of the things that are likely to give you trouble with your shaves. Now, we've spoken about razors. We're not going to go there per se or about soap. So we're assuming, we're starting on the assumption that You've already, you're already into wet shaving. You're already into using a safety razor. You're already into using a brush, be it synthetic or badger or boar or horse or whatever the case may be, whatever fiber does it for you, um, and a soap or a cream. Okay, so that is the assumption. 
That is where the assumption begins. But there are other things which may cause some problems. Other things, and I want to cover off on those uh, this evening very quickly and also get your feedback. Look, feedback is very important. I, I think it's what drives learning and the conversation. I, uh, I've never, ever claimed to be the fountain of knowledge, not the fountain of anything, really. But I really want to bring sort of this focus on some of these things that I have found in my uh, experience um, and share it with you. And I also want you to share it with the rest of our audience. So if you're watching us on YouTube or Facebook, and in fact, I think tonight, tonight we're actually on Twitter as well. So we've decided to go up Periscope again for all our Navy uh, people. Up Periscope. I don't know what's happening with Periscope. They said they were going to grandfather it. They said they were going to get rid of it. But no, it's back. It's here. Periscope is, is with us for, for a short time uh, until they get rid of it again. I don't know. They keep saying they're going to get rid of it, but they're not. So they're the things that I want to discuss with you this evening. Um, uh, so you can ask any questions you like and make your contributions if that's something that you uh, that you feel uh, may benefit the community. What have we got there? We've got any other... Oh, I see. Right. Uh, like Sarah Carter said a couple of weeks ago, I have to troubleshoot her wanting the bathroom whilst I'm shaving or leisure time, as she calls it. Wow. Wow. I hope you're Chromecasting this or casting this up on a big television set somewhere in your home and that I'm filling your living room with immense pleasure. Anyway, that's one of the things that we're going to talk about. That's one of the troubleshooting things that we're going to talk about uh, this evening. So let's just cut to the chase and then I'll, I'll, I'll get your feedback. I think it's pretty important. These are the six possible pain points Sounds like I'm selling steak knives or something like this. Ooh, wait, there's more. Um, the six possible pain points when it comes to shaving. By the way, I'm drinking French Earl Grey. I've had too many coffees. I, I, I can't get to sleep at night when I drink this many coffee. I just, I just can't do it. Um, but uh, and plus, it's been a very busy day. We've had the end of financial year sale happening as well. Thank you for those of you that have purchased and, and helped us alleviate the uh, stock taking scenario. This is a time of the year that I despise in many ways because I have to come into contact with the taxation department in some way, hopefully not in a very big way. Anyway, so I digress. Six possible pain points other than the tax department when it comes to shaving, and these are important. Some are more important than others, but let's see how we go. Right, the first one, it's an obvious one, but it's one that I cannot stress. This can make or break your shave. It's that important. Inadequate preparation. Prep, 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 and more prep. Please do not assume, as I have done in the past, that you can just slap on some lather and go for it. Preparation is king with this, with this sort of stuff. You, or, or queen. I don't want to cause any problems. Uh, yes, it is king and queen when it comes to preparing for your shave. You must prepare your face or your legs or whatever part of your body it is that you are shaving uh, because it will make a difference. And if it doesn't make a difference, you know pretty quickly the razor might be a bit tuggy on the skin. Um, you feel that the shave is kind of irritating you. So apart from the tugging, you also think, oh, that feels a bit rough. I can guarantee you that one of the key factors in this is inadequate preparation. And it's something that we kind of assume, it's, you know, you know, it's sort of a given, but it's not so given. Um, a lot of people that have uh, difficulties, a lot of people that have reached out to me or sent me an email, whatever, or communicated with me through DM said, look, I still have problems under my neck. I still have problems, you know, with my shave. It's still not quite right. It comes down to prep. Prep is everything. Prep is everything in everything in life. But in, in shaving in particular, it is critical. Um, it is absolutely critical. And how do we do this? As Brent has ushered in uh, beautifully the forward to what I'm about to say, hydration. You need to wash the whiskers. If you've had a shower, that will help. That will certainly help. Just wash with a very, very mild soap. Um, uh, use either a, a, a glycerin-based or an olive oil-based soap as a prep, right? Um, and then when you come out, you can use either the water from the soap that you're using, in other words, bloom water, for want of a better term, 
don't want to get into that discussion uh, this evening. Um, or you can use a dedicated pre-shave. But preparation is key. Clean whiskers, no matter where they are, is the place to begin, right? This is one of the things that will cause problems. And if you don't address these problems, you're going to have a subpar shave. Simple. It's that simple. It's probably boring as well, but it's simple. That's where you has to begin. Inadequate prep is very, very important. It's critical. And it's something that I thoroughly uh, and strongly, in the strongest possible um, way, recommend to you. All right, what's the other thing? Well, this is one that a lot of people don't really discuss, but I think it is, it is very, very important because it's an unseen thing. People think water is water. Now, um, for our Australian audience, I will mention a place that I have shaved in that has been more than some part, and that is South Australia in Adelaide. When you shave in Adelaide, good luck trying to get a really good shave. It's very, 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 very difficult because of the hardness of the water. The same can be said for California. Um, uh, on the occasions that I've been there, and I've been there a few times for meetups and all sorts of things, yes, there you go, there's dedication for you. Um, I just couldn't get a really good lather. I just couldn't get the sort of lather that I was used to, to getting uh, when using the water at home. Now, I don't know if I've mentioned this before, but I'm on um, uh, tank water, I'm not on town water, so it's basically rainwater that is collected in a water tank, a reservoir, and it uh, works very, very well. Um, now, this is a thing um, that that is uh, overlooked in many ways because you think, well, water is water, and that's that. It's, um, it's, it's something that you must not overlook. And we'll talk about how you can help alleviate that problem. Speaking of problems, uh, do we have problems with, is the audio level dropping down for anyone else? Must I come closer to the microphone and go all Barry White on you? You can't get enough of your love, beef. Yeah, Barry White. That was my Barry White, by the way, and that's all I'm going to do. Anyway, talking of hardness and water hardness, what is it you can do? Well, you can use... Um, uh, products, soaps, um, that have a high glycerin level in them. That's the first thing. Uh, a high glycerin level may assist you in producing that leather, that lather, which will, you know, come as close as it possibly can, uh, depending on the hardness of the water, to bring you a fairly good, um, uh, you know, a fairly good consistency. Remember that, that hard water is water that's full of minerals, principally calcium. And will it will hard water damage high end high end razors? Hard water will damage anything given time. Um, uh, coffee machines, for example, need to be descaled from time to time. This is part of the descaling process. If you don't descale your coffee machines, they will damage them. Now, how do you how do you counter that with your razors? Well, you clean them. Uh, you clean them effectively, and I've, we've done a video on cleaning razors, so I will not revisit that. Um, high end razors, look. It depends on the hardness of water. There are places where the water is so hard, it's so hard it's done time. No, it's a dad joke, I know. So hardness of water is very important. I hope the audio levels are great and I hope my Barry White uh, impersonation got things going. Uh, hello, Desi. Love you. Thank you for joining. I really <laughs> appreciate Really appreciate it when people that I love dearly drop in. In fact, I love all of you, I have to say. I have to confess. Audio all good here. Thank you, Stephen. I really appreciate that. That's very, very uh, encouraging to hear. Otherwise, I may as well just be talking to myself, which isn't an unusual thing, really, these days. I talk to myself quite a bit. Okay, so hardness of water. So glycerin will help that. So what do you do? A lot of people say, oh, no, I've bought a soap. I'm not going to add other things to it. I understand that. And this soap needs to work straight out of the packet, straight out of the tub, straight out of the tube. Well, if it doesn't, it may be that you've got hard water. That is a pain point or, or, or a bit of troubleshooting that you may need to consider. If this is the case, if you know that you have hard water, then glycerin is your friend. Okay? So you may need to do something uh, about that. Um, so, yeah, yeah. You like that? I knew you'd like it, Alex. Thank you for joining in. Thank you, baby. Anyway, right, so hardness of water is very, very important. Let's soften things up. Um, oh, reloading YouTube fixed it. Oops, okay, thanks, John. Nice nice of you to let us know that. Imagine reloading YouTube at 3.20 a.m. 
You are dedicated, sir. You are dedicated. All right, so hard, hardness of water is the The other thing, blade selection. This is very, very important. And we've spoken about how one person's blades, no one's trash, well, all that sort of thing. Your, viol- your mileage may vary. This is very important. Some blades do not work for people, for some people, right? It's a, it's, it's a fact of life. It has to do with your skin. It has to do with thickness and the coarseness of your beard. It may also have to do with your level of experience, lack of technique, and all these sorts of things. But blade selection, find blades that work for you. It sounds blaringly obvious, but it's a thing which may be causing trouble. You may want to like feather, like some people do, or you may want to love astros, or you may want to love uh, you know, Gillette Blues. You may want to love these things, but if they're not working for you, just use what works for you, okay? So the, the, the blade you select is very, very important, and it could be another thing which could be adding some pain to your um, to the main game. So it, it's, it, it's critical. It's very important. As I said, I, I, I can't stress it enough. Uh, make sure that you either get a sample pack or whatever, and there's, there's plenty of places you can buy different blades and just change them out. Use them, stay with them for a little bit, see how they work for you, and then, you know, try and create some sort of, it won't be a quantitative analysis because it's very hard to do to do that and to keep those variables in check, but at least it'll be a qualitative analysis. You'll know that mm, this doesn't feel quite right for me. It's not giving me a great shave. I don't think these blades are for me. And that's fair enough. That's absolutely fair enough. Right. So, but it, But it could be a pain point. The other thing is grain growth, again, something that a lot of people just ignore. Have a look at the direction of your growth. Um, you can map your face. In other words, let the whiskers grow for as long as you possibly can. Of course, if you've got a very, very long beard, this may not be quite as relevant, but if you're shaping the top of the beard or shaving underneath, just around the Adam's apple there, then the grain is very, very important because that could be um, a, a cause for either celebration or an operation of some sort. Um, just be mindful of those things, okay? Uh, look at where the grain, the growth... I mean, on the cheeks, it's basically straight down, more or less, but on the neck, it's doing all sorts of things. And with legs... Don't make me go back to Barry White. I'm not doing Barry White again, okay? I'm saying, I can't get enough of your love, babe. I wonder if YouTube's going to pull this up and say, look, you've... You know, you're, you're doing, you sound so much like Barry White that we're going to have to, we're just going to have to, you know, um, penalise you and take this video down. It's uncanny how you sound like Barry White. Anyway, right. Okay, so grain growth, that's it. It's very important. Make sure you look at that. It's a very, very important thing. Safety razor technique and angle of the blade. I think this is a very, very important thing as well. The technique. Before we go there, Brent, if one uses distilled water, are you are you obsessed? <laughs> distilled water is good. I'm loving distilled water. Look, distilled water is another one, um, but it becomes a little bit cumbersome. Look, you can always carry a little uh, squirt a pump pack of uh, of glycerin, right? That's easy to do. Distilled water, you're gonna need a bit of dis- <laughs> need a bit of distilled water, um, unless of course it's something that you have to do given where you live. If you live in the desert somewhere or if you live in certain parts of the world where the water is particularly hard, then I think the distilled water doesn't make you obsessed. It just makes you an aficionado. It makes you the person that wants your shaves to be on point. Uh, don't lose the Barry White. No, I won't. I'll, we'll, keep, we'll keep it going there. We'll just, I won't touch the microphone because think anything could happen. Right. Um, so your angles... The safety rate, the, the, the technique that you use is very important. Sounds obvious, but type of blade, the technique, the hardness of water, these things, if you think about them, could pose a problem, could make things a little bit different or, or difficult for you. And I say different because I've travelled to other places other than my own and tried to shave and have experienced difficulty because it could be the hardness of the water didn't bring any glycerin with me. You know, I didn't, I didn't think that it was something that, you know, oh, I'll be all right. I'll just take, you know, I'll just take some, you know, a stick of palm olive or, or tobacco or whatever it is and I'll be fine. No, no, I won't be fine. And I won't be fine simply because I'm shaving outside of my usual habitat. So it makes a difference. It does make a difference. Sounds silly, I know, but it makes a difference. 
and I want to make a difference in your life by getting you to think about these things. There could be other things that you know that you need to consider when you're shaving. Right. This one's interesting. Um, this one, some people will probably think that this is just, I'm probably overstating it a little bit, Con. What are you going to do next? Ask us to align our chakras and you know get into crystals and all that sort of stuff? Hey, is that what you're going to do? You're going to make us burn incense and shave our heads and refer to our students as grasshopper? It's a reference, a cultural reference there, which may not be lost on some of you, but others will probably think, what is this guy on? Anyway, anyway, the physical environment. What I mean by that is this. If you try and shave and there's a lot of noise around, right? It could be a jackhammer. It could be aeroplanes going. It could be children screaming in the next room. It could be dogs barking, right? Just stay with me, bear with me. I know this sounds ridiculous. And then on top of that, you have the fan going in the, in, in the bathroom because obviously you're trying to get rid of the steam after you've had a shower. And so you've got the fan going, you've got um, uh, ACDC playing in the background, dogs barking, uh, children crying, and all of a sudden you think, yeah, that shave wasn't as good as I wanted it to be. This might also, I'm not saying it is, but I'm saying it may also, it certainly affects me. Uh, there was this trend once that people used to say, "Oh, what was your playlist during your um, during your shave? What what, what sort of thing? You know, what, what are you listening to on Spotify while you're shaving?" Um, yes, Brent, there are shavers that like music in the background. I love music and I listen to it all the time, but I have I made a decision some time ago that I don't want any noise when I'm shaving. I want to be there. I want to be present. I actually like hearing the audible feedback that the razor gives me when I'm shaving. There, I said it. I said it. I know. I know people like bringing in the radio. There are people that have radios in the shower. These suction cap, they want to stick with suction cap radios in the shower. And they, oh, no, I need to have music. I need to have it in the shower. I need to have it in the toilet. I've got to have, I've got to have, why well, you have that music everywhere? What is that? I don't understand that. But we're not talking about that. We're talking about shaving. So it may, it may put you it may put you in a spot where you're not concentrating. You're not there. You're not in the moment. You're not zenning out. Tony Ruiz, shave with earplugs. Yes, you could do that, I guess. But I actually like hearing the sounds of silence. Is that another musical reference? Mmm. Yes, John. <laughs> Raise it. Well, look, I'll tell you what. Um, there are a number of – when I used to watch people shaving, because I, I don't do it anymore. It's, it's, not that it's weird, but I don't have the time. Uh, sometimes I'll watch shave videos, but when I used to watch them, the, the most annoying thing for me as a viewer was the tap, the tap the, or the faucet, as you call it in the United States. The thing was running, and it was, all you could hear was this water running, right? And I'm sure that the person was concentrating on their shaving and I'm getting the video out. But to me, it's a distraction, Okay. I don't want to be distracted when I'm shaving. For me, it's a moment that I can... Okay, I think about things too when I shave. I'm there in the moment and I'm present and all the rest of it. But I'm also quite mindful of the physical environment. Um, if you've ever had to visit family or go somewhere, interstate or to another place, you know, that's not in your own environment, and... Okay, here's a scenario. You're going to a wedding right, in another state. And, of course, you haven't shaved because you want to shave on the day of the wedding. And there's a cacophony outside. Kids running up and down. Ah, oh, where's my shoes? Where's this? Where's that? Music's playing. The photographer will be here in 10 minutes. Uh, hurry up. The cars are coming. They'll be here in an hour. This and that. Yeah, have a good shave with that. No, no. I'll be here waiting for you. I'll, I'm here for you. I'll just wait and tell me if you had a good shave with all of that going on. No, the physical. This is what I mean by the physical environment. Okay, I also mentioned a couple of lives ago that I've always, if I've gone away, my first shave in a hotel room has always been subpar because I just didn't. I thought, oh, no, no, I need to know the water. I can see that it's lathering, but it might not be quite right, and so I dial it in, and then the second and third and fourth and subsequent shaves are better. What is that? Is that a phenomenon that occurs to you? Please let me know in the comments below. I want to know. Does the physical environment play a major part in your shave or at least a part? 
Uh, spa music. Look, that maybe bring out Barry White again. We could do spa and um, yes. Look, in all seriousness, uh, I don't want to hear distractions. I don't. I, don't, I often wondered when my late father would shave. You know, I could hear him shaving from the next room. Like, oh, what's this guy shaving with? Just water? No, no. It was because the house was quiet. He'd get up early in the morning and he would shave early in the morning. And I suspect one of the things, one of the factors of that was that he had alone time, his time. And quite often you find uh, men of a certain age, you know, that these men would be now in their 60s or 70s or whatever, they're early risers and they're in there and they're shaving and they've done it. And you wake up in the morning you see, and they're shaved. And all you can smell is a beautiful aftershave that they're wearing. And you think, wow, what time did you shave? It's only like 8.30. No, no, I was up at 5.00. So maybe, maybe, I mean, this is just, think about this for a moment, maybe the physical environment does play a part. I know it plays a part in the Carter's household. Because people want their bath. Get out. I can't shave with you in here. Sorry, you've got to get out. I'm sorry. This is me. Can you leave? I'm doing a video. All right, so you want to share a video with all these unknowns and all these people, that these random people you don't even know, but I'm in here wanting to pick up my foundation and you're, you want to do what? It's a thing. Uh, try sharing a bathroom with a teenage daughter. <laughs> Competition for use of that. Look, um, this is, Leon, I, I, I agree with you entirely. This is one of the most, this is one of my favourite comments. Once Johnny Cash was asked, you know, how is it that you managed to survive this this long when you you know he, he took his wife everywhere they'd go on tour together and they were a loving couple they you know they they endured they were very very happy and they said Mr Cash how is it this is the Johnny Cash they said how is it that you you know that your relationship lasted so long and you didn't have in, in the divorce courts like most other stars and all the rest of it and he said separate bathrooms yeah Separate bathrooms. Wow. My mind would have gone to all sorts of other things, but no, no, separate bathrooms. That's how we have survived. It's good old Johnny Cash for you. Uh, we have any other comments there? Yeah, yeah, Stephen. There's nothing worse than trying to travel shave and the plug doesn't hold the water in the sink. Then you have white washers and you nick yourself and you turn the washers red. Yeah. And then housekeeping comes in and says... Gee, I wonder what happened in here. Looks like a crime scene. It's a thing. For me, at least, it is a thing. Um, when I'm out of the physical environment that I'm used to, it may bring up some problems. Uh, Jim, evening, Colin from Adelaide, actually found it a lot harder to build a ladder when holidaying in Tassie. <laughs> well, wow. Yeah. I'm wondering, Jim, how how is your, I mean... Are you, do you find Adelaide's water? I mean, see, this is the thing. If you live there, you learn to shave to the conditions, okay? Um, having been to Tasmania, and I've got to say, I haven't been in Tasmania long enough to stay there to shave, although I might, may have had a shave there. Um, look, yeah, possibly. Let us know if you've had troubles um, with the water in, um, uh, in your neck of the woods. But I think physical environment is very important. Hello, Peter. Thanks for joining the live. Um, I like quiet shaves too. No music, no running water. We have separate bathrooms in my home too. You see, Peter's onto something here. Um, yeah, you just don't want to be interrupted. And uh, uh, play music. If you want to listen to music, blurt the music out as much as you like. Uh, look, okay, I'm going to say something else. You kind of have to respect the shave you have to respect that moment that you're you know it's not just the practicalities of yes look i want to be I want to shave probably i don't want to get nicks and cuts or whatever but i believe and i know this kind of sounds all very esoteric and a bit too sick i'm taking yourself a little bit too seriously here con but i think you need to respect what you're doing you need to respect the craft the the artistry that's gone into manufacturing for example the putting the brush together the razor together I mean, this is this is not just removing whiskers from your skin. There's something else going on there, and you need to spend that time for yourself. It's also a kind of decompression time for you, I think. 
or if it isn't, it should be. And if it isn't, try it and, and let me know. I, I really would like, like – some people like shaving at night. Why? Because you're out the door in the morning and you don't want to rush. So there is an admission there that rushing something and, and having something that's not quiet may, um, in fact, impact the quality of the shave. Any other comments? I agree with Jim. When in New Zealand, I use bottled water and a kettle to get a shave. Yeah. <laughs> New Zealand and uh, Tassie? Okay. I, look, Dave, uh, I have heard that there's there might be some similarities between Tasmania and New Zealand. But anyway, look, um, yes, it, it's for me, going back to um, Peter's point, uh, yeah, just a quiet shave. You know, be there in the moment, enjoy your shaves, enjoy the brush that you spent money on, enjoy the, the soaps or the creams that you spent money on. J just be there, be there in the moment and think about what you're doing and, and do it with thoughtfulness and I think that might help improve the overall experience of the shave I'm not saying it is for sure and some people can get in there they're in and out of the place uh, you know it's like they're you know they're they're in the air force or something and they need to get get onto a jet as quickly as possible yeah that's an interesting point we'll talk about the air force in a minute um and so for them speed uh, speed and accuracy is very important so you get into the into the shower into the bathroom shave and out the out the door um air force yes bomber jackets those beautiful furry bomber jackets you can see them wall. we all know why they had that piece of fur around the collar of course because they're constantly turning and surveying the uh their surroundings and of course this would um wear out uh collars and also irritate the pilots so if you put a nice little woolly bomber jacket which was all the rage in the 80s and the 90s. I do remember the 80s and the 90s. I guess I'm kind of dating myself. Um, that's what it was for. There doesn't need to be a rush. Think about your physical environment. Think about the things that you have around you. Um, try and uh, yeah, Just try and be mindful. I understand that some of you have some limitations in terms of the daughter and all the rest of it, uh, you know, and, and, and people coming in and out, young children, you know, you might be your children want your time and all that sort of stuff. But it has to be you time. And I'm speaking to ladies as well as men here. Uh, it is the journey and not the destination. Absolutely. Uh, and we hear this time and time again, and it sounds cliche, and you think, oh, really? Are we going there? Yes, we're going there. We're going there. It's very important. And if it's going to help you and your shaves, then I think it's um, it's critical. It's not only important, it's critical. Um Stephen says he dislikes night shaves. Why waste a BBS head shave only to go straight to sleep? I agree with you. Um, I generally don't shave at night, um, and and I because you you know the whole shaving experience is you've just had it. You now want to face the world, but also you're using other products that will make you smell nice. I need to bring them to the pillow. Seems like a bit of a waste to me. Um, the only time I've shaved at night. Is hardly ever. No, it's been when I've had to get up really, 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 really early in the morning um, to get a flight or whatever it is. And for practical purposes, um, I just needed to do it. But generally speaking, it's not my thing. I know a lot of people really enjoy a night shave, but I suspect they enjoy a night shave because this is looking at this 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 kind of variable of the physical environment. Let me know, how important is physical environment to you? Is it something that you consider? Is it something that you think is a bit, it's a bit, you know, am I, is it a bit of overreach on my part? Let me know. I'd really like to hear um, what you think about all that. Um, we've also had some comments. Somebody wants um, uh, to wants me to take you on a tour of the store. I'll definitely do that. Um, some people have asked whether it's a... Um, whether it's a green screen, it is not a green screen. If I slightly move, if I move out of focus slightly quickly, you might see that it isn't really a green screen. There, see, it's a real place. It's a real place, um, and I'll take you through, and maybe we might even go through the warehouse and bear it all. Well, up to a point, I guess. Look, I think the time has come for me to say adieu. Look, thank you so much for joining us. I know there's some comments here that I hadn't, um, uh, haven't really um, um, answered. Although, what is what has he said? Is that why your shop happens at 10 a.m.? Use your time in the morning so you don't have to rush. 
Thanks, David. Yeah. Thanks for blowing the whole thing apart. Yes, that is why. Yes, it is why. No, it's not really why. Um, it's because I'm sort of we're here till six every day. So I prefer to open a little bit later, but stay later because people finish work and they want to pop in and they're not rushing. You know, most places close at 5 p.m. here in Australia and particularly up here in the mountains. In fact, some places close at four. I think, no, no, I'll be here till six. So this, so literally at six o'clock, the shop was open. I had to close it, set up all this very, very quickly. I mean, we set it up um, and then straight into it. But yes, 10 a.m. definitely helps. Uh, it's, it's not banker hours, no. That's right. Um, what can I say other than thank you? Thank you. I love you. Thank you for, 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 for watching yet another live. If you have any suggestions or anything you'd like me to, to, to cover, um, if there's anything that you want me to, to talk about and um, I, I feel that I'm equipped uh, to do that and to at least generate some discussion around that, then please um, leave a comment. You can DM me. There are a number of places you can find me. But around uh, 10 o'clock, usually you'll find me in bed. I don't know. The older I get, um, you know, it's just falling asleep these days. I'm sitting in front of the television. Oh, look, Netflix. There's something on. I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is. I was born in the wrong decade. Uh, yes, you are later. You will have to hit rewind. Apologies. If any, do not apologize. Just contribute. No, that's absolutely fine. So I think at least you made it. At least you got here. It's about the journey, not the destination. Speaking of destinations, it's time for me to head in a homewardly destination direction. That away. Um, thank you for joining us. I really appreciate it, particularly those people that are up at 3 a.m. What are you doing at 3 a.m.? What are you doing, particularly in Texas? I know Peter's up late at this time, Peter Wolf, but I don't know. What are you doing? Right, uh, that is it for me. Thank you, and we'll see you in the next live. Mm -hmm.